you know, this is the second um, operational quote unquote crew mission uh, under the commercial crew program. Um, you have uh, four more with SpaceX, six more with Boeing once they get their missions going. Um, I'm curious, what's the timetable uh, right now for maybe extending uh, the contracts uh, and how will that competition go? Will it be a competition uh, as you move forward into you know ordering new crew missions to have services beyond the next few years? Yeah, no, that's a that's a great question, and um, it's actually something we haven't um, discussed in detail yet. It'll probably be a discussion we'll have in the not too distant future, and we'll bring we'll bring that to agency leadership through an acquisition strategy meeting and lay that lay lay the lay that out so yeah don't not that's something we uh have time to work and we really haven't talked in detail about how we're going to move forward beyond the current current contracts and commitments okay um you know just uh, with spacex already flying it, it you know seems like the period of performance i guess we might be front loaded with spacex missions and then once boeing gets flying we may see a few boeing missions in a row is that kind of how things lay out from your perspective yeah, no, the plan right now um, and is to uh, alternate SpaceX, Boeing, SpaceX, Boeing. Um, however, you bring up a good point. The Boeing, the first Boeing Clue flight is 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 delayed, um, and we're going to get um, most likely, um, if you count Demo 2, uh, four, four crew flights with SpaceX before the, the crew test flight with Boeing. Um, so we may have to relook at that, but we haven't gotten around to talking about that yet. Yeah. What's the latest with um, uh, the agreement with Roscosmos to start flying uh, cosmonauts on U.S. vehicles? And could that happen as soon as, as, soon as Crew-3? Yeah, so the, um, the, uh, the draft of the implementing agreement is um, close to being released. So yeah, is uh, so we're it's uh, we're waiting for the final signature uh, at, on the state de- from the State Department on the implementing agreement, and then we'll um, provide that draft to Roscosmos and begin negotiations. Um, I believe it's now too late to do do all the develop you know a suit and do the training for Crew Three. Um, so most likely the earliest mission to have a cosmonaut on would be crew four okay um i wanted to switch gears a little bit and talk about the hls procurement that uh you announced on friday i believe with spacex um you know you you talked a little bit about how this was really the only option you had in my understanding this is the only option you had to fit within the budget that congress gave you for fy21 and what you may be expecting in the next few years um you know, how realistic is it to be able to, to add on a new, a second HLS contractor in this accelerated services procurement soon and how soon? Yeah, so that's what we're going to find out. <laughs> so we're going to, yeah, we need to, we, we, uh, we, we have a, we have some thoughts on how to maintain competition. Um, and in the next one or two weeks, we're going to put out a request for information to everyone. Um, and then engage, get engage in discussions um, to see, hey, what would be most useful um, to uh, partner with industry on everybody between now and when we would release the RFP for the services, um, new landing uh, system services procurement. Um, that would, um, you know, allow people to continue to uh, well, help us refine the requirements, allow people to continue to mature their designs and reduce risk and set them up to, um, to in a, a year to in a year and a half from now bid on the, on the human landing services contract so that um, procurement so that we can get those services in place by the end, by, you know, the late 2020s. Um, the review that's ongoing now with uh, the Artemis schedule, um, what, uh, you know, I think you said Friday, the goal remains, at least contractually, 2024. Is that, um, I mean, is that is that realistic at this point? I mean, I know those were, that, that schedule was written last year, I guess, but uh, 2024 right. is still in the cards. 
Well, yeah. So it's what, like I said, it's what SpaceX bid <laughs> in their bid that they could achieve 2024. But, you know, as we've seen with, uh, you know, commercial cargo and commercial crew, these initial sketch, these systems, you know, developing the systems is really challenging and you run into technical issues. And I think the good news is that, um, you know, uh, you know, Northrop, SpaceX, Boeing, and, and NASA have been able to work together as a team to overcome technical issues to make sure that we can uh, achieve the, you know, make the, the system will meet the requirements and, and be safe to fly crew on. Um, and um, but yeah, these schedules are these schedule the schedules for these very complex human rated systems are really challenging. So it is it is high risk. Um, and uh, so we're, we're good. now we it's good it's now that we've awarded the HLS contract, um, the study team is factoring that into their uh, analysis and recommendations. And so we'll get the final um, a well what will most hopefully be the final brief um, from them probably in about two weeks. Um, and though we'll factor in kind of uh, the assumptions we have around around HLS and the schedule as well as the other Artemis missions. And then we'll we'll use that to to lay out what the uh, missions look like beyond Artemis II. Uh, you know, what sort of stakeholders are involved, you know, from the administration, I guess. And do you have any independent review team looking at it as well? No independent review team. It's uh, the team we have is independent of Artemis and the Artemis programs, um, but it's a NASA team. It's not a uh, independent. Uh, it's not like an IRBs like we've done for say JWST, totally independent of NASA. But the people that the NASA folks on it, the NASA staff on it, are independent of the of the programs. Um, and uh, and yeah, they've been they've been working um, to understand where the where the programs are, and um, you know what. Um, and, and, and what the best, and, and, uh, we've been, we've been meeting with them along the way, um, both the, both the, uh, political folks at NASA, as well as the career folks like myself to give them feedback and, and guidance. So yeah, no, but no, nobody independent of NASA, but the team is independent of the programs and, um, and it, it pretty much is a internal internal study with guidance from senior leadership of political and, and career. Um, is the desire to, to have a new uh, permanent NASA administrator, uh, the nominated NASA administrator installed uh, before making any final decisions about how things look after Artemis II? Yeah, it depends. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we would absolutely want um, uh, Senator Nelson and, and um, Colonel Melroy to be uh, on board. We'll have by the time they get on board, we'll have the team, the study team, will have completed their work, and we'll have taken that and had some, you know, um, some follow up and some meetings with the current senior leadership. And so, I imagine we'll lay that out for them with and, and have recommendation, a recommendation or recommendation or options for them to consider. Um, to to make a decision, the timing is challenging because we have we have we have this the study team finishing up in a few weeks. We have finishing the FY twenty two president's budget requests with the administration, and then we have a new administrator and deputy administrator coming on board all around the same time. So. I think we just we have a lot to work through all that as best we can. And before um, I let you go, I wanted to get an update on something that it's always fun to talk about: flight hardware with the SLS core stage arriving at KSC soon. Um, you know, what's the latest in terms of getting it off the test stand and having it delivered to KSC? Um, and you know, are are you still holding to a launch? I heard November, maybe uh, if everything goes perfectly, is that still viable? Right. Yeah, that's pretty much it. We, we we ran so we ran into some weather down in Dennis. I mean, it's been kind of a weather challenge for the whole the whole test campaign down there, with all the storm summer storms we had. But um, they were able to lift the core stage out of the out of the test stand yesterday, and um, I saw a picture of it on the crane 
out of the test stand, and I think they they put it on put it in the cradle last uh, the, last night or this morning, and so uh, they will probably get it. What is today? They'll get it on the barge, um, probably by tomorrow, um, tomorrow or or maybe day after, and then if they can do that, then it should show up at KSC um, around the 29th. Um, so that's the current status. Um, and then, yeah, we're, it's, it'll be very challenging to meet the November or end of calendar date, you know, end of calendar year target date. What we'll be doing is, um, you know, we, for every, for programs that are in the final phase of integration and test, it's pretty much a single line schedule, right? <laughs> of integrating all the major components together. So we'll lay out what, you know, we have, we know, we have a schedule that we know what needs to happen when uh, with respect to integrating the vehicle and then, and, and then Orion, integrating, integrating the launch vehicle and within our, in Orion and everything. And, and we'll be tracking that. And, uh, you know, as long as we keep hitting that milestones, we have a shot, but as soon as we see we're, we're missing those, you know, those you know, two or three milestones, then we'll probably take a look at the schedule and, and really take a hard look at whether uh, November is possible. Yeah. Well, what's the the work to date in November right now? Yeah, I mean the uh, the uh, the best possible schedule, if everything went perfectly, would be end of October. Um, yeah, that would be the if er everything went perfect, it would be we we could launch probably end of October, maybe early November. Um, so we don't have a lot of margin against you know the end of November date right now. Okay, uh, Steve, thank you so much for your time, and it's always good to chat, and uh, look forward to chatting again soon. Okay, thank you.